Uh, when I start to think about it 20 years ago, I was much a young, young man. Um, there might be people around here who were not born then. But um, to get to the meat of the matter, it all started off from what we know today as the Sarasuti Marsh National Park, which was actually our fishing ground, our farming area, the place where we go and we collect our house materials. It was in all a place where our natural survival had all begun. Alvin Laredo, fisherman of Barranco Village. Louis Ishim, a farmer from Midway. <clears throat> Antonio Kukul, community health worker from Conejo, Conejo Creek. Pablo Salam, farmer, Sunderwood Village. And Jose Coy, farmer, Cricket Circle Village. Their dream was to protect and manage the marine buffer zone and the buffer communities of Barranco, Midway, Conejo Creek, Sunderwood, Cricket Circle, and all that the, all the things that are around their environment. The dream then became a vision, a vision to link biological diversity, management with the physical and cultural survival of the indigenous people. The vision became a mission. Their mission is to safeguard the ecological integrity of the Sarsun Timash region and employing its resources in an environmental song manner for the economic, social, cultural, and spiritual well-being of its indigenous people. Uh, I want to say thank you to one and all. Bantios to pray, gracias, seremi, thanks. Um, it's a pleasure, privilege, and honor to say thank, thank you to all the buffer communities represented here, to the media, to our donors, everybody. Maria Rosewood from Conejo. We also have Lumber from Santa Teresa. It really started from the fact that there is no other place like this in Toledo where we look at protected area system and looking at a particular protected area and the communities that are adjacent to it. So the resource center combined those three topics into one room. So when you come in here, you get a feel for why protected areas is important for Belize. Secondly, how the Star Swinton Marsh National Park contributes to that. And thirdly, the very, very important role of buffer communities in the maintenance, preservation, conservation, and protection of a protected area. We were able to secure funding through PACT, which is the Protected Area Conservation Trust. Secondly, we have another donor called SWIFT, and also part of this money came from Satin itself as an organization. And um, at this resource center, who can, who can um, should I say, can come and be a part of it or to visit it? The main audience for the resource center are school children. We have two in PG Town, St. Benedict just down the road and St. Peter Claver. But also anybody who has a vague interest in protected area systems and, and the buffer communities. In this case, we have the community of Barranco and we also have quite a few Maya communities. So when you come to the park, you're going to see how 
these two indigenous groups interact with their physical environment. We know that you mentioned communities. What is your feeling like with the turnout today? I'm very happy. They all came. Some of them left at 4 o'clock this morning to be here.